Hello, everybody, and welcome back to M and J Games. I am Michael, and today we are looking at a park called Paisley Park that was created by Taylor underscore eleven underscore eleven, and this was created on the PS4, and it's still got a little bit of um, space left. But it says, "Welcome to one of many parks built from yours truly." This park is very moderate and small with some thrills sprinkled throughout. I hope you guys enjoy. I have litter, staff, happiness, etc. all turned off in the settings for the best experience. Credit to Iron Maddie for the collider flat ride decor and implementation. So as you can see from some of the cinematics, really, really great job. Just really beautiful night park. And I'm really excited to get started with this tour. So this guy did an amazing job of hiding the entrance to the park. Like, it is tough to find this thing. And now when you walk out, you are in pitch darkness. No, it's, um, we're going to stay at nighttime for most of this park because with I think that's probably how this was designed, is my guess. And we're going to start out here in flip cam mode as... So right away when you walk in you get a view of that i believe that's a launch coaster up there on that hill and this is just awesome so merlin's revenge right away right out the gate right out the gate we got a coaster um so let's see i feel like there was a a walkway somewhere oh, okay cool yeah if we walk this way this will take us to this little little area over here, and that's the sky lift. So we'll have to take the sky lift in a little bit to kind of see what it looks like kind of going over the park. And here's the exit to the sky lift. Yeah, so I'm, I'm intentionally trying to hide a lot of the views, um, you know, because I want it to feel like we're actually walking around in the park. And this is what it would feel like doing that. So let's go over to Merlin's Revenge, shall we? I mean, nothing quite like a coaster right out the gate. Right when you come to the park, stomach ready to go. Let's get popping. Let's uh, let's get rolling early in the morning, or I guess this time late at night, um, riding the coaster. And this queue is awesome. Like this queue is great. Oh, look. okay. Look at the detail. You got. Um, it's obviously themed around kind of with the castle vibe and stuff. So let's walk through all these guests. Boom, 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 boom. It's the only negative thing about flip cam sometimes is walking through everybody. Ooh, I like that. It gives the look of that being like the starry sky. So uh, I love this station. Like it's, it's not... It's not overly detailed, but it's done so well. And so we like we got the operator saying bye, have a nice ride, and so forth. So this is really cool. So let's um if we click on that coaster. So let's see. So launch vector and stats. G forces look really good. It's got four inversions. So let's go ahead and take a ride on the coaster. If I can find the right one, there we go.
So that was a really, really good, really smooth, really well done coaster as we're just kind of trying to get a, some good views of kind of the surrounding area right here. And I love how it's kind of up on this mountain. And oh, that's really cool, kind of seeing the chairlift go right by it. But you've done a good job of adding these extra rocks. And then also with keeping it at nighttime, it really kind of has that extra um, kind of blending of the terrain tools, if that makes sense, where you see that they've been kind of blended, but you can't see in extreme detail, which is obviously makes it look more realistic and stuff. Um, but yeah, I love this coaster. That was awesome. Super smooth. Love the layout. And I think it had good pacing. You know, it might have slowed down just a little bit right here. Yeah, maybe that's more than a little bit. <laughs> um, but the pacing is really, uh, um, other than that part, was really good. But at that point, it's kind of getting near the end. So um, this to me seems, it seems like it's more in the intermediate category probably in terms of with guests and stuff. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed that coaster. So let's continue with the tour. So that was Merlin's Revenge, and this was the exit to the coaster. So just you get some good views kind of coming this way. Man, that's a long exit path, too. Um, that's maybe the only advice I would give in terms of dealing with the counter is shorter paths, like shorter exit paths, because none of that's on a grid. And so that alone, that exit path alone probably took up 1%. Um, if not a little bit more than that. So now we've got Paisley Alley. Whenever I hear that, it reminds me of Diagon Alley. Or as Harry would say, Diagon Alley. I think that's what he says basically in the second movie. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, we might have to come back and take a look at this later, not in flip cam mode, so we can really get a good feel for the uniqueness of these buildings and Wow, really well done. I love this little alleyway. This is so cool. Oh, this is so well done. So, goal alley. 4-4. Four, four. What does 4-4 four, four mean? There we go. All right, and now we've kind of elevated just a little bit, but you can see tremendous views of Merlin's Revenge. I mean, just the views in this park are, so far, are really good, and, and also doing a great job of hiding everything else. Because at this point, um, I have no idea what else is in this park, but we've got this nice kind of seating area where you can sit down, you can watch the coaster a little bit, um, watch the chairlift, look out at the water, or we can go on an adventure. So it says the adventure is out there. Okay. Maybe the only thing I would have done differently here is I would have made this one path because it's gonna save you on the counter. And you can still put this fencing and stuff there. And then you could put like um, those barriers so that they don't necessarily walk through the wall. Um, yeah, it's having to be a shorter path. It's getting a little congested. Oh, look up there on the hill. Well, that is cool. Which way? Right, left, right, left, right. Let's go right. I'm starting to buck the trend. Everybody always seems to go left, and now I'm starting to go right all the time. My favorite ride in the game. They just look absolutely beautiful. The Chero Swing. So it looks like we've got a food place in here. This right, yeah. Oh, I like that. It's kind of got a skylight. That's really cool. I don't want to miss anything, so we're gonna go out the way we came in. So Cavern Express, okay. I like the, you know, we're gonna go up the entrance just to say, or the exit, just so we're not hopping over 50 people. Um, but the station looks really detailed. Let's see. So I'm guessing, is this maybe a mine train coaster? Let's see if we can tell from this window. No, it's got, uh, I can't tell right there. With it being Cavern Express, I think is what it was called. Yeah, that's correct, mine train coaster. 
Nice station. Ooh, nice using those window um, panes there, whatever it's called, for the storage like that. Another little operator's booth. That's one thing I need to do on my X Park is start adding that extra level of detail with the operator's booth and so forth. So Cavern Express. Um, there's the results. I mean, it's a mine train. You're not going to have anything too crazy with a mine train. So let's go ahead and hop on this coaster. We're going to ride this in front bumper. And I'll talk to you guys afterwards. Guys, I'm blown away with that coaster. And you might think, hey, it's just a mine train. How are you blown away with it? It's because that is by far the smoothest mine train I have experienced in this game. I mean, it's got a great pace because it never goes too fast. I mean, there are some mine trains that do seem to pick up a good amount of speed. Like if anybody's been on Thunderation at Silver Dollar City, especially in the back, that thing, <laughs> that thing books. Um, for a mine train but um it's so smooth and how it's been dug out out here and stuff i think especially at nighttime i think looks really good um uh, you know i think it's one of those where in the daytime it's always harder to have stuff look as natural um, but i think you still did a pretty good job of it but at nighttime it it looks so good and then obviously having these all these buildings and stuff with it is really cool especially this one right here I think that's just a really cool sight line for the park. Um, and it's a good kind of center, or not centerpiece, but a uh, point of reference. So you, all you can do is kind of look up and see that and you kind of know where you're at in the park. And I love these little buildings here at the end. Um, you know, it just kind of adds that sense of realism with it. You know, maybe the only thing I'd say is using some thick wooden beams or something to kind of um, add a trim to these wall pieces. That'd be my only suggestion. And then maybe yeah, that'd be my suggestion on that. Um, but other than that, I mean, really, really good. Absolutely loved it. So let's hop back in clip cam mode. So I do believe I said in the intro, but if not, this is a PS4 park. And I believe it's at the limit for a PS4 park. Ooh, that's a cool look right there with that boomerang. Going up the, going up the lift like that. Deja vu. Which way is it? Left or right? Gosh, those coasters are awful in real life. I mean, I would love to know, does this, can anybody with a straight face say 
they like riding the old Vacoma coasters. And if you if you could say that, what about the old Vacoma boomerangs? Because these are just about as bad as you can get in terms of how rough they are and just not a fun coaster to ride. Um, but love this queue right here. And you've got these kind of buildings around it. So to kind of make it feel more boxed in, I would think, or make it feel kind of more secluded to this area. Ooh, that lighting is nice. Now here's one suggestion I have, um, is if you, let me pause that real quick. If you take this, if I can click on it, there you go. One suggestion I have is moving this light up because then it looks, it really looks like recess lighting then, um, compared to having it like that right there, which, Hey, by the way, we got a flip cam mode somehow I, I need to figure out how i did that so i can do that every time got out of cam mode without being kicked back to our original spot what but no i love the lighting in here um, i don't think it's overdone either i think it's just right and once again another operator's booth so let's let's take a ride on deja vu and we're gonna ride this one in seat view is who cares if this type of ride is really smooth or not because these things ain't smooth in real life so All right, let's get the HUD back off the screen. And I mean, it's a boomerang, so not much to say about that. Um, other than, you know, might've been, this part might be a little bit too small here. Um, but what I do like is you made a custom catwalk up here. So I think that's a cool part. And you, you get this little step down where they would step down at to walk down. Um, only thing is from a realism standpoint, I don't think that ladders could support <laughs> um, that aspect, but, um, really cool kind of how you went with that i'm um, trying to add all that realism aspects to it um because any boomerang like this in real life they do have something like this so that if the coaster valleys up here for some reason you got a way to evacuate the the riders and the guests um so let's go ahead and get into flip cam mode that was an awesome name all right or at least i think it was we only caught the tail end of it um Okay, so these buildings were just the back of... Okay, I got you. So it was more just kind of having a little walkway for food and stuff. We got trees growing through the bathroom. Um, so turbine entrance. Oh, oh yeah, this is the one that was... He gave credit to Iron Matty. This is a long queue for a flat ride. Oh, you can see it right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this Maddie's Eden Gardens is still still such a great park and did such a good job with this aspect right here. Um, so the way he implemented it was really good. We'll have to check it out from an overhead view at the end. Um, oh, we can't walk up on the steps here with the flip cam mode. Such a bummer. So we got this tunnel out, or it's tunneled out here, and I like those lights of the tunnel. 
those kind of fairy tale lights. I think those always look good. Hey, we can see our plip cam guy. This is the guy that we used to, I was about to say, he's got really strange ears, but <laughs> yep. So now let's continue on to, where's this gonna be? There's not many people in line, so I'm guessing this is a flat ride. Or maybe I'm wrong about what I said about not many people in line. Oh no, this is a coaster, okay, cool. Um, so this looks like it's the kids coaster. And let's, uh, let's pause that for a second. Okay, so it looks like if you... Actually, no, I'm still in plip cam mode. Let me see. Okay, yeah, yeah. So here's the deal. If you're in plip cam mode and you double-click on something, it will pull up this, um, this cursor. And then if you click on an item, clicking on that item takes you out of plip cam mode. So I'll kind of explain that again the next time. Um, but let's... Once again, I think if you made these recessed lights, I think it would look, um, look really good. Um, once again, that's just, you know, this is all just my opinion if I'm giving tips and this is not trying to say it's a It's better than what you've done or anything by any stretch of imagination um, So we're all better at pointing out stuff in other people's parks than our own <laughs> So it's a junior Wendigo coaster. No need to look at the stats. We all know what this thing does So nice junior coaster. That was actually longer than I expected, as we can kind of see the layout right here. Um, so a little bit bigger than I expected for a junior coaster too. But I, I, like I said, I really like it. Um, station's very unique, and you know I like how you kind of added these fairy lights and stuff right here, um, or vintage lights. Sorry, not fairy, not fairy lights. So let's hop back in plip cam. This might be one of the first times that. I've truly been in flip cam for the whole park. So more fun. Oh yeah. Okay. And another thing too, like I've said before at night, sometimes I can kind of mask the look of the train. Um, so we got another flat ride right here with a little, little skin around it. Ooh, there we go. That's my type of co coaster right there. We've got what looks like a hyper coaster called, is that Excalibur, I think is the name of the coaster. So let's see what else we got over here before we go on that. So we got one of the Sun Flare, I think is what it's called. Um, man, those things are terrifying in real life. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, I just don't feel supported in that. I'm like, these things are holding me up. Um, at least the ones at the Cedar Fair parks, you feel more supported. But that is, whew, yeah. 
So I think that's uh, called Phoenix. So this is a nice little food plaza here. Um, and so one thing it seems like with the buildings is you've kind of kept one or like maybe two different styles and you've kind of carried that throughout the park and you've done a good job of that. Um, okay, so I'm trying to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So now we're going to go to the main event, or at least in my opinion, the main event, Excalibur. Look at that view. And then we'll look at everything at daytime as well. So what's over here? Oh, that's going to be the um, chairlift. Okay, so let's see the view from the top of the chairlift. So nice view of Excalibur right there in the first drop. Now, one thing I'd say right away is lessen the supports. Um, there's too many supports right there kind of flaring out. Um, and yeah, you know, just kind of do every other track piece have supports or something, or maybe every third track piece. There we go. And so, you know, let's get out flip cam now to kind of um, see this. So what you do is you, if you double click on something and it took us out of flip cam mode, just like that. Um, because it's clicking on that, I guess because it's clicking on that scenery piece, it's thinking that you want to either um, build it or build onto it or something like that. So it's taking you into kind of that build mode camera. So right away we can see this kind of aerial view. And this looks like an awesome cube. Very wooded, makes you feel secluded. We got this nice station building here. So now this is the Rage Coaster, and it's Excalibur. If we look at the stats, everything all green, which is great. G-Force is good. Almost a Giga Coaster. Oh, man, you missed it by 13 feet. Um, so let's go ahead and take a ride on this coaster. So that was Excalibur, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like the first half of the coaster took some major inspiration from the Titan or Goliath, depending on if you're looking at Six Flags Magic Mountain or Six Flags over Texas. But this first drop, and then this one here, which it does more of kind of like a, it kind of comes up and then goes down, up a little bit and then down again. Um, and now the coaster that they, that the, um, the end game coaster that actually represents the Titan or Goliath is the Anubis. Um, and the colors actually model those two as well, along with the lift hill supports. But then you come here into this helix, or a little bit of a helix, not quite a helix, into the brake run. And then basically the second half is different, but I, I really love this coaster. I think you did a great job. Um, you obviously do a very good job at smoothing out coasters. Uh, maybe the only thing I'd say is adding in a little bit more like airtime hills and stuff. But if you're going for, um, if you're inspired by a ride like the Titan, that ride has one airtime hill, and it's this one right here. So it's kind of, you know, that might be where you got your inspiration from, which in that case, I think you did a pretty good job of using that as inspiration. So let's go ahead and take an overhead view look at the park. And I think this was great. 
Um, you can see a lot of terrain, a lot of terraforming, a lot of paint tool and all that stuff. And what I really like about this park is you, you didn't do what I tend to do sometimes, which is overdoing it with coasters. You've got one, two, three, four, five coasters, I think. And out of those five, two of them will be considered family coasters. Um, one of them is probably would be considered intermediate. Um, I also think this one would probably be intermediate and then one would be extreme. Um, but I think you did such a great job with this. And then especially with this little, little walkway right here. This is awesome. So well done. Just really good detail. Gosh, that's really cool. And then we come out over here. Oops. Yeah, so you did a good job changing the terrain as well. You got different heights to where the pathing's at and stuff like that. Um, so like I said, I really love this park. I really enjoy taking a look at it. And so make sure to click on the link below to go download it for yourself on the workshop or at least give it a like. And once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit, um, give it a thumbs up. And hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. See you next time.